Hey everybody, I'm Chris. I'm the Blue Collar Beer Gentleman and I welcome you to my channel. I like to drink and review craft beer and I don't like to pay a whole lot of money to do it. So on this channel, the beers that I select usually come in around the $2 price range. And today's selection is no exception. I paid a buck forty-nine for the Farmhouse Flying Fish Golden Ale. Let's see if I can bring that back a bit. There we go. Now we're getting into full view. You can see. There it is. Farmhouse Golden Ale. <clears throat> uh, based upon the parameter, or, well, the information that I've seen among the rest of the reviewing community, it's regarded more as a Golden Ale than a farmhouse. And Golden Ales are generally all malt. Um, they're less bitter than American Pale Ales. So that's, the, uh, that's, that's basically the idea behind a Golden Ale. This beer specifically... Uh, use the following malts superior pilsen terra foam acidulated and white wheat um, now this beer does have a where is it here we go here we go 4.6 ABV typically golden ales come in between 3.8 and 5.5 it has uh, <clears throat> has 15.1 IBUs typically golden ales come in between 15.28 so this is on the very low end of the bitterness scale um, maybe one day I'll have a video coming up before very long where we'll discuss IBUs. Uh, I'm starting to think that IBUs are, are less and less pertinent. A lot in the reviewing community seem to think that it's less and less pertinent. Quick facts about this particular beer, uh, among the reviewing community that is. They, uh, 12 of my friends on Untapped have given this a cumulative score of 3.58. 29,000 of us have given it a cumulative score of 3.45. Beer Advocate has had 608 rankings, giving it a 3.48, which on their scale is okay. Uh, this did use hops. It used Columbus and Palisades, and it also used Chico yeast. So uh, there you have it. That's the ins and outs of that. If you're not familiar with farmhouse beers, uh, they are a, a New Jersey brewer. And my experience with them personally has been, well, frankly, kind of hit or miss. Uh, I either like the beers from them a lot, or I really, really don't care for them. Um, the only reason I was really actually willing to give this a chance is that it was referred to as a golden ale. And like I said, when I went and I looked at the uh, the beer blogs and the reviews and checked out the reviewing community, I discovered that most everybody considered this a golden ale rather than a farmhouse ale, even though it does say farmhouse golden ale. So that's that's the thing is when you've got two different parameters like or you've got two different varieties like that, it's difficult to say. Uh, as luck would have it, this beer is, let's see, 10 days before its best buy date, so it's a perfect time to be drinking it, and uh, hell, I don't see any reason to, uh, all right, let's get to pouring and see what we've got here, this is pouring very, very, very light, I mean like Pilsner light. Uh, and Pilsner's come in very, that that extremely golden blonde. And this is full of carbonation like you would expect a Pilsner to be. That's a, that's a pretty decent head. I mean, it's, I'm going to say it's probably semi-resilient. It's, it's nice and foamy, but it does seem to be going away rather quickly. It's neither wispy nor, uh, nor particularly sturdy. Going to give a quick whiff, see what we got. Well, actually, I'm going to do a beard wipe first. Smelled nothing but malt on that one. So I'm going to go ahead and stick my schnoz in and see what I got. Well, I sure smell malt. I smell malt, 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 lots of malt. And then I smell, uh, I think, as I said, it's Chico yeast. I'm not familiar with Chico yeast, but I do get a very yeasty smelling. This, boy, this by all, by all accounts, I got to say, this really looks like a Pilsner. I will say this, right now on the camera, you're actually seeing more color than there is to the beer itself, uh, which is very, very rare. I have... Usually it's the other way around. There's more color than the than the camera itself is showing, but you're actually seeing more of a golden uh, color. This this almost has no color at all. It's almost clear, but that carbonation isn't going anywhere. And as you can see, that head is still kind of standing up. So I am going to refer to that as a semi-resilient head. So anyway, uh, we've done all the talking about it. Let's get to drinking. Cheers. <sighs> Hmm. Well, it, see, Pilsner is one of my favorite varieties, and I would say it tastes like a Pilsner, except I, I don't think it's very good. Um, 
you can taste that yeastiness that you normally get with a Pilsner. I'm getting a malt aftertaste that's not particularly pleasant, quite frankly. Uh, there's a little bit of sweetness to it, but honestly, what I, what I get more than anything, the aftertaste is that maltiness. And I'm a big fan of malt in beer. I really am. Um, <coughs> If I'm going to drink a macro beer, I'm going to have a Michelob, and Michelobes are known for being exceptionally malty beers. This is, uh, maybe I just don't like the malt profile that's coming through, but um, I am not, I'm not impressed with this beer at all. And in fact, I'm, I'm starting to see why it got such lukewarm uh, reviews among the, uh, among the reviewing community. Uh, 3.48 at Beer Advocate and 3.45 at um at untapped this is eh, i don't know if i'm ready to call it a bad beer but i'm it's certainly not a good beer um i'm gonna say it's it, it, i'm not gonna go ahead i'm not gonna call it a bad beer but i am going to say it's below average uh i think that's a fair assessment of it yeah below average is is definitely the right uh, Hmm. I think I'm going to be fair and give it a full uh, 2.75, but I don't know. This this is just this is not a this is not a good beer, and it's not a beer that I'm going to recommend to you. I'm not sure. I'm trying to think of who might actually like this beer. What beer I could liken it to? Um, I think honestly that the the beer I could best liken it to is Rolling Rock. If uh, if you're a, a, a fan of old number 33. Then uh, you may like you may like this beer. It was, as I said, a buck forty nine. So you know you you get what you pay for, I guess. But um, I don't know. I, I'm just I'm not crazy about this beer. I'm not going to recommend this beer. Truth is, I'm not even going to finish this beer. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give it a two point seven five because I don't find anything particularly wrong with it. But it's it's just not good, and I'm. I'm not crazy about this beer, but uh, anyway, if you like this video, and, and I know this was not a, a great review, and I apologize for that, I've, I've, I'm a little bit rusty trying to get caught up on some things here, I've got some family matters going on, um, but anyway, that's, uh, here it is again, it's the Flying Fish Farmhouse Golden Ale, $1.49 for this 12-ounce bottle, um, there are better beers from, uh, from, from Flying Fish, and I highly recommend you try that. Their Red Ale, for example, was re was recommended uh, by Steve at uh, my local uh, uh, Total Wine, and he's a great guy. He, I, I recommend. I, I, if you if you are here in Vegas and you get to the Total Wine in Boca, find Steve. Steve's a good guy. He knows a lot about beer. He's more than willing to help you, and uh, talk to him because his he uh, it was on his recommendation that I tried their Red Ale. Uh, I'm not going to recommend this beer at all, as I said. So, guys, if you like this video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And until next time, drink good beer, and don't break the bank doing it. Cheers.